But I mean, there are definitely people that I've heard of that didn't get their visas because it wasn't, it was a flimsy, venue. it was too flimsy. Yeah, I think say, um, most of them know artists. It's not established. Like when, when we usually go on tours, venues we are playing with. Blessed love, my viewers and subscribers. Wagwan. Open all doing good. Open all doing great. Now, my people, we're there again on the Swalcha TV with another Mutabaruka content. And this one is the latest cutting edge as of Wednesday, April the 10th, 2024. The latest. And this one is going to be super educational. So you definitely want to stay tuned. A lot pertaining to the music, the work, and celebrating a legend, Bonnie Wheelers. So my people, definitely stay tuned because it's going to be pretty interested. Before we go into it, you know it's a black power movement. So definitely drop a like and subscribe and share with a friend or a family so they can be a part of the movement. Now, let's walk. Yeah, good night. This is the cutting edge. A warm, warm night in Jamaica. You know, them are celebrate. And sometimes them forget, say, you have artists out there where you need to celebrate. Give thanks to IRFM. Remember, say, Bonnie Wheeler is deserving of celebrating. Today is Bonnie Wheeler's birthday. We have played some bonus wheel before going to the moon to the matter. We have a guest all the way from California. <laughs> Sometimes when you say California, everybody thinks about LA. But California is a big place. So we have a guest here. I know say all of the artists them supposed to be very interested in how we're going to talk about. Very interested. Trust me. So you want to know, you had to sister, first of all, you did hear Queen Africa and Sister Carol. Sorry, Queen Africa and Bonnie Wheeler. Now you listen to Sister Carol and Bonnie Wheeler. Yes. Cutting edge. So as we that tell you, well, RFM celebrating Bonnie Wheeler right there today. The program already on Thursday. We play a one hour Bonnie Wheeler and never celebrating birthday. Last week, Thursday. Today we start out with Bonnie Wheeler. Bonnie Wheeler and Queen Africa. And then Bonnie Wheeler and Sister Carol. We have a whole album with Bonnie Wheeler and some of the sister them. Well, here we know. We just played the Bonnie Wheeler and the sister who oh, we tell us we have an interview. She come and she say as she first look about Bonnie Wheeler and him ban visa them to go to America with them like a tour. We have two lines at the, the house, you know. Believe you me, two lines of fire for your yard, you know. Hi. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Good evening, Muta. Why are you the fire, Tula? You know, say, how long I know you know, about 15 years? No, 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 no. Since Pele. Pele did 2020. Yeah. 2020. Yeah, one time I road managed for you. Yeah, that, that, When Pele was getting sick back yeah, in those yeah, days, yeah. and she asked me to step in because she couldn't come, and I yeah, road managed yeah, for yeah, you. And it was a long time ago. So it's been like 30, about 20, 30 years. 20, 30 20, years. Early. Yeah, like in the 90s. Yeah. In like 99. In the 90s? Yeah, like 99, 2000. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that yeah, long, yeah. long time ago. How many of you used to do cutting at them time there? Never what? Excuse me? No, I'm not trying to figure out if you used to do cutting at them time there. No, when no, we, no. You we were go, doing your band. And, yeah, you had your, your band. So, a 30 and, years ago then. It was a tour, yeah. A, a 30 years ago. Yes, a long yeah. time ago. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> we date ourselves. I want to introduce yourself to Jamaica. I know them know you already. Well, I mean, I'm the artists, them. Okay, yeah. Well, you my have name's... artists out there right now. 
Let me tell you uh, my story. My name is Tula Carter, and I have a company for since 1994 uh, called Third World Music. And I also had a company previous to that. And the, and the reason people say, why did you call it Third World Music? I said, well, because I was doing visas and bringing artists to the United from the States world. from the third world. <laughs> yeah, so, and it was before, we were doing all these names before the internet, before smartphones, before yeah. people were really on computers. In 94, we mm -hmm. were just doing everything with our posters and our and our uh, guest list and our and our databases from handwritten databases and books and things. I mean, and little postcards and little Rolodexes. So nobody would think that you could have a name that somebody that conflicts with someone else. So, yeah, but yeah. nevertheless, that's the name of it. It's Third World Music Group. And I um, so in 90, 1994, we were. Um, I was also in another company which was out based in Oakland, and it was called Out of Many One. Out of Many One Productions with a partner named Carlton Campbell. Carlton Campbell is related to Bunny Whaler, related to Andrew Tosh. Andrew Tosh's mom is, is Bunny Whaler's sister. Yeah. So, so there's like this connection of Bunny Whaler, even though I didn't know I was going to speak today. But the, fun, the funny thing is, is that the story starts with Bunny Whaler. Um, my story, working, doing immigration for artists, that's what I do. Um, I do artist management, and I also work with artists to get them visas to come to the United States from from different countries, um, but mostly Jamaica, you know, because reggae is so close to me in my heart, and I understand it so well, I can defend it and work it, and I really always wanted to be a bridge to help artists come because I was very concerned about the culture being watered down yeah. in America. Well, so, the last, the last year one visa I have is you did. Which one? The last year one, one visa. Oh one. Oh one visa is you did. You yeah. Work it all. That was a while ago. All yeah. right. So, so I can yeah. I'm going to tell you about how the explain. I have a list. I'll explain about what the visas are, but um, and what and how you how you uh, what you're looking for in a visa and what you need and so on. Yeah. No, I'm not going to reach it so yet. Yeah. Where you born? In uh, was born in New Jersey. Born in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And live in California, in I San Francisco. California. In San Francisco, yeah. And your interests just jump up in a reggae or you didn't have other interests in other kind of music? Well, you know, my background, my mom's, my our family, my, my mom's side is from Trinidad. So we grew up around, you know, Calypso and, and, uh, and West Indian music and West Indian culture, but not necessarily Jamaican culture. Um, and then as California was, the West Coast was a huge reggae uh, territory. So if you lived in California, no matter where you're from, you were going to be indoctrinated at some point yes, with reggae. Of course. So, um, so, peep, so it just naturally, I gravitated to reggae music more than any other music. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then because I was around people who needed help in terms of doing, I, we did, I was a promoter. Um, that's how I ended up working with Bunny Whaler. We brought Bunny Whaler to, uh, my partner and I brought Bunny Whaler to uh, Berkeley, California. And we were, um, it was 1994, we were going to uh, share, share the cost of bringing him with a promoter out of Los Angeles. So we were in, up in San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah. They were doing a show that had a huge show. That one, so our show was going to be on Saturday. There's going to be on Sunday. We uh, split the cost on the airfare and on the visas and certain Hotel things. Hotel thing, yeah. Well, we to bring Bunny up and to give Bunny. Bunny didn't want to fly at those in those days. He yeah. still didn't want to fly. Yeah, so we yeah. enticed him with more money. You know, we pay you twenty five grand back in 1994 was a lot of money. And still a lot of money, but it was a lot of money back then. And they paid him that same much because I did the contracts. I saw the okay, contract. Okay, okay, I see what so, you're saying. So with the contracts were combined, two shows were combined. And so the, um, the promoter in Los Angeles, we started hearing rumors like a week before that they, our show was never going to happen. Mm. And so we didn't understand what they were trying to do, but we had some very important people call us and say, your show's not going to happen. Because You're, they, they, them, them, I fly. I like, say, like, no, they yeah. were sabotaging his show so that he wouldn't get in in time to come oh, do yeah. our show on Sunday. Yeah. So, I mean, on Saturday. Our show was on Saturday. So Bunny needed to fly in on Thursday. And, they, and they, it was a lot of problems. But nevertheless, the show didn't go on for anybody because... 
once um, the politics got involved and I explained it to Jabi, I'm like, well, fine, you want to come do the show? They need to give you another $25,000 because the contract's for $50,000 for the whole weekend. Yeah. And then the guy, and when Bunny heard all of that and really understood what was happening, he didn't come to do the show because they couldn't honor the entire contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were going, and he had already gotten his big deposits. So he, they, they broke the contract. So yeah. then we rebooked him for the month later in Berkeley, and that's when I learned how to do the visas myself. Okay. Because I didn't have to reply, re, re, um, rely on somebody else to do it. I learned yeah. how to do it. Yeah. And I got, we hired somebody. They showed me how to do it. Once they showed me how to do it, I knew how to do it forever. Yeah. And I've been doing them since 1994. Yeah. And I've done them for a lot of different artists all over the years. And then the promoters in California who wanted Bunny would come to me and ask me to do, like Carol Bruno at Reggae on the River. The first time I did I his... I Carol did, Bruno. Of yeah. course, she loves you. Yeah. So, yeah, she's <laughs> gone now. But she, but she brought Bunny and she called and said, Tula, I want you to come and help me do this. Yeah. And I didn't really know her that well, but she saw that we brought him and she was like, no, I have to have him on my show. So she had him the following year. So... So by doing the visas for the artist, it was strictly to just make sure the artist got here and were able to perform yeah. and to bring the culture to and keep bringing the culture. It was because it was a barrier. It was a barrier to artists and it still is a barrier today to artists. You can walk across the border in the United States, go get set up. They'll give you a thousand dollars a month, give you a place to live, give you an apartment, do all this stuff if you're illegal. But then on the backs of artists that want to come and perform and do it right, they charge you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. So it's about the system is not balanced. It's broken. The, we all know that. That's, that's uh, the biggest yeah, thing yeah, in yeah. the world right now is the immigration system. But everywhere. It comes like you play two roles most of the time. Yeah. Like road management and getting the visa. Right. I just, I Which do everything. Which one you prefer? Which one you prefer? Well, what happened was is I preferred to do the um, artist management, but to tell you the truth, um, we all know that when you're doing artist management, working with artists, things can happen and you are out of your control. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so you can spend six months, eight months trying to put together a tour and it falls apart. You can spend a lot of energy up front and not get paid. Yeah, 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 yeah. so your time becomes... Um, it's, it, it, you, you could do that only so many times and you just get discouraged, right? Mm. But when you're trying to work on business parts, visas where you are in control of every aspect of it yeah. and nobody, you don't have to rely on anybody. You know how to do it. You, it's like your taxes. Yeah. You know how to do taxes for somebody. They pay you. You get your money. You help. The, you, make, you make it possible. You still have the same goodwill. You make it possible for the artist to go and perform and come to the United States. Yeah. And you make it possible for their band and everyone to eat you know the band the whoever's involved and yeah. then the promoters want those artists they want to they want to get access to them so then you're providing a service to the promoters to the, uh, all right so let me ask you now make we get into what we are saying tell maybe an artist are listening right now and they might say what are that they get visa for artists and thing what it takes for you take up the case of an artist to get a visa fee. What, what you need to do and what you do. Okay. So there's um, different types of visas um, that an artist um, <clears throat> can get. There's entertain entertainment visas for, sing for artists. There's one that's a, called an O artist, an O, an o level visa, O1B. And there's also a P for a group. So if you're a solo person, such as yourself, you would go for an O visa. And that is a visa that requires you to be internationally, extraordinarily uh, talented. And a P visa is for a group. And that's a group that, let's say, any group that's, that's made up of all the members, no, there's not one lead singer, one like lead person. World. Yeah, like third world. Yeah. yeah, so exactly. So they would go on a P visa. So the O visas are the most highly coveted visa because the, the visa is uh, for three years. The P visa is only for one year. So that requires you to refile every year if you're a group. I'm a car so stick up in. I didn't get an O1 visa, but an O1 visa 
can the one with the O1 visa carry a ban separate yes. from himself? Yes, because then they, they file for the O1 artist, the solo artist, yes. and then they have to file an O2 for all of the other the support asks. Okay. So there's they're called essential support personnel. Okay. That could be managers, that could be your band, that could be any number of types of um, your engineers, your sound men, mm. your hype men, your side acts, your, cool. your back singers, your, wife, your, 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 your backup friend. singers. Your, no, they're on a P. <laughs> they're on a P. The wife is on a P3. I know, I know, I'm sorry, on an O3. Yeah. And that's a different one for the wife and, the, and your children. That's a o, an O3. Oh, like, yeah? Yes. There's an O1, an O2, and an O3. So the O2 is a petition that you have to file for all of the people. And you can put security person. I've put flag people, flag men. I've put um, a variety of acts, but that a variety of people who support the act. Yeah. But you have to be able to uh, explain that, defend that, and put it together in a way that makes sense. So you cannot just bring... Explaining. I, yeah, you have to, I have to be able to, I, you tell me these are your people, yeah, and you yeah, tell yeah. me what your what people do, do. Yeah. and I have to make sure that they actually do those, yeah. and then you have to sometimes have testimonies for them, you have to have bios for them, you have to have, you can't just put their name down and mm -hmm. then send it in, you have to show that these people actually do what they do for at least one year, mm -hmm. and that they're related to this artist, that they yeah. work with this artist. Yeah, yeah. So you, so there's a lot of paperwork for each person, that, and you put in the O1 for the main person, and then you put in the O2, and the O2 goes together, there are two petitions, and they go in, and if you're doing a for a group, it's a P1 for a group, or a P1S, which is PS for support. S stands for support. And then there is also a P3. Now, what if you are an artist and you're not the level of an O1 artist? You don't have Grammys. You don't have um, awards from Europe. You don't have awards from IRAMA. You don't have any awards. So that's the one key thing with the O1. They have to be on that level to be able to have awards. If you don't have awards, then they will put you, if you're just starting out, maybe you've only been in the business for four years, and you would go and you don't have any real heavy commercial, you don't have um, big, you're not on billboards, you're not on all these so big... So the farm, them actually ask, have you ever gotten an award in America? And them yes. It yeah. to that? Yes. Yeah, I can help. No, no, they ask you all of that. No, it's at uh, there's there's um so the thing is is there's different criteria that they look for. Yeah, yeah. And there's uh seven criteria. The first criteria is do you have any award from a credible uh, yeah. a credible a source? Yeah. In in wherever it is. If you don't have that, then the other six criteria you have to meet three out of those six criteria and you have to be able to meet it un it, it, you have to prove that you can meet this high level of yeah, yeah. what they're saying. All right, tell me that rest of them on the, the criteria there. Well I'm gonna pull it up on my computer because okay. it's um it's so you say when I the criteria when I is visa, we just get visa for everybody, same visa. What do you mean? Say that again? No, when we use when we use it when we use it to enough with no band. Right. We used to get visa for each man, but in that no level. It was well, levels visa. It was just Well they used to be so they used to oh so things back in like the nineties, a promoter could say, I'm doing a festival and I want to get a visa for these people to come in for three months or two yeah. months, and they'd give them two or three months so they could work all summer. Yeah. And so they so they would let all they'd let multiple acts be on one visa back in those days. Now, yeah. But then there were, and I can't, I don't know the story, and I'm not going to call the artists that did this, but because I wasn't involved in it. But some artists would put a lot of people on the visa. I mean, some people would put the um, promoters or whoever, they'd put people on the visa that were really not related to the artist. Yeah. So when they would go up for their inter interviews, yeah. if they didn't make it, the U.S. 
uh, embassy would be like, well, how how is this even put together? It would be a flimsy petition that got through. Yeah. And when they do the interviews at the U.S. embassy in Jamaica, which everyone has to be interviewed, they started to understand that there were too many people and too many, you know, somebody's mom and somebody's uncle and yeah, this yeah. and that. And, and so most this, of them were run after. What's well, that? yeah, they had, that's a whole nother piece of it. But but there was too many people on there that weren't really in the band. Real, yeah. It wasn't real business. Yeah, it right. was a way for people to be able to use the visas to get go out of the, yeah, go to foreign, go foreign, yeah, right? Yeah. So then they every year they just started to refine it, refine it, refine it to the point where an artist cannot combine two, two artists. If you have one, I'm not calling names, but if you have one artist that's a singer and has a separate entire career from another other artist then they can't when you try to put them on the same visa they're going to tell you they have to have their separate visas okay the artist that the artist will have to have a separate visas exactly. in their own name and their own crew yeah. under them you cannot combine them okay. unless they are I'll, I'll call this name out like michigan and smiley everybody yeah. knows that that is a duo yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so they would have to, to be those two people would be on a O one together okay but if you have several artists that are like, I don't want to say names, but let's yeah. say you have a female artist, a male artist, and then another female artist over here, and they're all touring together, they all have to have their separate visas. Okay, because them as artists. Yes. Yeah, they should all have their separate visas. So, yeah, so unless uh, unless they is, record uh, together. If eh? they record together, one of them's going to be an O, and the other one has to take this, be on the O2. Mm -hmm. So one of them will be the O, oh, the lead uh, lead singer yes. or the lead artist. Yeah. Then they could add them to the O2. But as you can see, people don't want to do that because they because you're supposed an O2 is support O2. Um, okay, I'm getting a little bit jumping around here, but anytime you have an artist that is an O1 visa and he has O2 um, staff let's say staff working with them. Uh, They're supposed to only go to the U.S. on that visa to work for that O-1. Them can't go to another person. Art, they can't, they're not supposed to work with other artists. Okay. If they, if they arrive to and they... Work with Muta. Muta must be to work with yes. yes, because when they get to immigration, yeah. if they ask them, what are you doing here? And they say, I'm going to go to this festival to work tomorrow and they go in and they look and they look on there and they don't see the O one one on that festival. They're going to say, who are you working with? Uh -huh. And if that person says, well, I'm going to support this other act, they'll send you right back and cancel your visa. All right, them, them, them still have this thing where if you apply for the visa, your management or your booking agent, I forgive them a string of dates. Itinerary. Before they validate you. Yeah. Let me use so, like give me one year what I did. And yeah. the, 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 the booking agent put so you're going to be here in that time, there in that time. So yeah, so the itinerary, these visas for P's and ones are itinerary based visas. So you so the it is based on an itinerary. Mm. Um what are you coming to do to work in yeah. the United States? Who is hiring you? Yeah. What are your real, are you working for distinguished companies? Are you working for distinguished um, 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 production? Yeah. Um, those are all of the criteria that fall into what you have to, where, what you have to meet, how you have to be compelled to do these various things that you say you're doing. And all of that has to be reflected on the itinerary. Okay. So the booking agents are great because they actually can say, you know, I'm a, I'm so-and-so booking agency. I've been around, the agency's been around for a number of years and we, we work with all these different venues. So, then, so they, they could call up, you know, venues on the West Coast, the East Coast, everywhere, and then they all write in and say, yes, they're going to hire this person. And then that goes right through very quickly because those are real, real booking agents, booking agent, yeah. real venues, real festivals, real, they're real business. So they actually call the venues and the booking agents. Well, they agent. can, yeah. They know which ones are real. As opposed to, let me give you an example. If you... Sometimes we have real, we have high level promoters like Live Nation, right? Mm. Those people, right? We have 
Then we have other promoters that have been doing shows for years that people, they do do shows at real venues and stuff. But then we have more street level promoters in yeah. reggae. Yeah. Street level promoters in reggae don't have a venue. They don't have a club. They might go to a... Um, uh, a uh, community center to do a show or they yeah. might go to a bar restaurant or they might go to a parking lot or whatever they don't they're not consistent but they are an important part of the business because in reggae everybody doesn't have access venue. to the big the big regular venues yeah. so or they validate them or they validate that well they will fight that they will look if so if you send in a you send in a um itinerary and it has it's going to be at this particular bar and they go online and they see it's just a food bar and what they, you you have to defend that you have to show that that place does reggae on a regular basis because we're talking about reggae right we're not talking about soca yeah, we're not yeah, talking yeah. about any you know anything else you have to defend that that is a regular establishment that that the artist is going to play at you cannot just put down anything on an itinerary because they will look at the itinerary they will if they if you google it and it doesn't come up looking like an actual nightclub they're going to say, well, this isn't, what is this? It's not a distinguished, um, uh, it's not an, um, a venue of a distinguished reputation. And so they will fight you on that. And then they will, and they won't, they won't give you the visa because it's an itinerary based visa. So they'll say that what you put together is makes no sense. And a lot of people have gotten their visas, not a lot, but I mean, there are definitely people that I've heard of that didn't get their visas because it the, wasn't, the it was a flimsy, venue. it was too flimsy. Yeah, I think say, um, most of them know artists is not established. Like when, when we usually go up on tours, venues we are playing with. A uh, rock band playing at them venue there. So they yes. move, you know, like, you know, some of them venue where we used to play it, right? I, 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 I feel that these artists now, it's just a bridge, you know, this I say, more put on a show with exactly. them. Exactly. And when them go up there, them get at a show. How them do that? How them do that? Well, they, so in order to get their visa, some, a part of that itinerary has to be solid. Yeah. Real business and solid. Once you get your visa, as long as you're going up to perform, you can take on other shows because you're still the type of visa that you're getting allows you to take on new new shows or work for other people. To the, the, the person who no, you can still that person who applied for you depend. And let's say if they're a booking agent, so you've got booking agents, you've got artist management companies, you have. Um, you have um, 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 nonprofits that do cultural exchange yeah, programs, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you have venues, that kind of thing. So you have several, that's all those people do different things, right? So if you have someone, like for my company, what I do is I try, I'm an artist management company, I do visas for the artists that I sign Money, a management money, company, yeah, yeah. and I allow them to go and work. Yes. And they could. I don't micromanage what they do. With other, I, with other promoters. Yes, yes, I make sure as long as they are not, as long as they are upstanding, they don't have any bad history. I monitor what I monitor what they do with the people that we set up the visa with. But however, for three years, I don't mind if they go out and work and do what they need to do. That's why they're got. That's why they came because they want to have a visa to work. As long as they're not going to go be, work as a nurse. Or go work as a yeah, yeah, as yeah. go work in a restaurant, or go do go try to go do something else on the visa that's mm. going to come back that says you. you're not you yeah you're not you're an artist you're a singer you're a, a engineer you're a um, bass player you're a whatever you're doing that's what you're coming up there to do if you start doing other stuff then that's so then that you jeopardize you, it. That you book you're, you're saying for an artist I hear same guy and somewhere go do something else. No, no, I've been really fortunate, but I don't take on everybody. Go like a streak. I, well, I just don't look at people who have problems. I don't work with people. You can tell who has problems. I do, I do. I mean, there's people you people who want you to do stuff with them. Just Google them. Yeah. Oh, that one's been got arrested. Oh, that one you got you've got in an yeah, argument yeah, with yeah, the police. Yeah. Oh, that one you got you know. Oh, that one you're smoking weed. Oh, that one you're hanging. You're you're on on the internet with guns. Mm. I mean, those are real cases of people that are here that have gotten. I would touch them. Because all I know is that I would do all this work and then they would get turned down. Yes, yes, yes. Because that you, if you can go Google somebody and find out that they have drama, then so will the officers who look at well, the document. Said, no, for them artists are right now. You look on YouTube, you see drama like, whoa. 
Yeah, and so we don't want that. We want to get, we want to promote reggae, and we want to continue it, the culture. Yeah. So we want to bring the best representation of artists to the United States. And we, you want to take a break? Yeah, we'll take a break. Okay. We'll take a break. <laughs> no, no break, no that is all. <laughs> all right. So, interested, interesting. Oh, some youth out there, who's artists now who don't reach a level uh, going out there. I have the criteria. Can't have uh, your pen or your paper right down. Yeah, I have the criteria th- and I'll read it so that you can they can understand what we're dealing with. All right, go on, man. Sweet, you want me go to do on, it now? deal with it. Okay. So for an O one, a qualifying criteria. If you don't have a one time award such as a Grammy Etc. Whatever it could be, the Mobo Award. It could be the um, the uh, oh, wow. the one from France. It, it could be any of those awards on a high level that you received, right, for your country. Or you could Irama. Irama is like ton does a lot of awards. You have thirty out of them. I see them. I know. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I got one. I got an yeah, Irama yeah, Award yeah. last last 30 month. Thirty out of them. I think I have the most. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> so that's so those so if you don't have that then you must you may submit documentation for at least three of the six criterias. One of the 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 first one is being a lead or starring participant in distinguished productions. That means who you're going you're going to be starring or you're going to be um, the lead of the production. Yeah. You are the headliner yeah. or you are one of the headliners because we do know there could be three headliners on a show in one night, right? Yeah, yeah. So you've got to either be the starring or lead participant in a distinguished production. The next one is you have to have national or international recognition. And the evidence to show that you have national or international recognition is is usually by critical reviews, critics, people saying writing that more. writing about your music, not about what kind of car you drive, not about your mom that you took to, to Sunday Mother's Day dinner, not about the baby that you had, not about the fight that you had. All those headlines do not add up to being an artist. Yeah. It has to be about your process about your accomplishments about how just about your music yeah. and and I have a, I have to say something about that in a minute but that would be you'd have to prove that with major newspapers and the newspapers have to be real newspapers like the like the gleaner like the um, observer um, like a uh, billboard like vibe like yeah. all those magazines those kind of things trade major trades major magazines and other publications and the circulation of all of those magazines have to be provided you have to they have to you can't just say hey there's a little magazine blog yeah. somebody that's doing it and he's got a hundred people and he's been around for a, zero, a zillion <laughs> years that's not going to qualify yeah, for work. Yeah. and the other thing while I'm here I don't know if there's any journalists out there listening to me but I've been saying this to people personally uh, in some of the journalists that I work with or that I encounter the art the articles that you write for the artists in in Jamaica and also this is a trend it's just it's drama it's not helping to make the music and make the artists stand up as what is a drama uh, what do you mean? they write drama they the kind of things like when they if they interview you and you're just talking about yourself that's not a critic that's not somebody that's not another music professional talking about you and interviewing and talking about your process and your accomplishments in your career you're talking about yourself that doesn't count mm. as that doesn't count as news Mm. That's self promotion. Uh, and you can't show them people. And so when you say when they when you show it, no, even if it makes it in the newspaper and it's an interview about you talking about you, oh, that's no, not no, what no, they no, want. Yeah, it has to be something. It has to be a somebody. Review, a, review. a review, yes, a critical review of you by a real journalist, mm. not about your car, not about your argument, not about who's, who's upset and who's fighting and who's on TV and who's not. All of that stuff that we get in current magazines and, and newspaper about artists, it might make the, the audience feel good that's reading it, but it doesn't do anything in terms of move the music and move the uh, profession forward. 
Yeah. You know, you're not going to see that kind of stuff in Billboard. You're not going to see that kind of stuff in any of the major movies. Yeah, Definitely you're not. not. So if if Jamaican journalists could move the move it up higher, set the bar higher for their their um their their um, the articles and yeah. things that they do on the artist and dig deeper to give it. I mean, it's nothing wrong with talking about the first one or two lines about an artist, something fun or something characteristic about him, but get to the deeper part about the artist. Because when we need to do visas and look back at the artist, and if they don't have a proper, any proper resume, you give me 10 articles and it's all fluff. It doesn't even work. Yeah. It's been rejected. Yeah. They will reject it. And so the artist will not get their visa based on you can't prove that they have any good critic yeah, yeah, yeah. any good um any national or international recognition okay so that's so now we i said we've done the first one was lead starring participant in a distinguished production the second one was national or international recognition the third one is a lead starring or critical role and that is seems like the first one, but this is now the person. So you got one. You've got to talk about distinguished productions. That means you're going to go work for a big, like Live Nation, or you're going to go work for some big company, some big festivals that they have on the in, in the United States. You're going to be there. And then the other one is now saying, well, what is your role going to be? Are you going to be a star in that? So there's that kind of goes back and forth. And then I'll go down to the next level of um, then there's the commercial and critical um, acclaimed success. That is based on how popular you are commercially. Mm -hmm. So you can have you can be maybe have one or two hits, but basically you don't have a record contract. You don't have um, any um, you don't have any real setup. Um, your business your business model is not really set up. You got one hit. Yeah, okay, yeah. you know, so you've got to show them. Wait a minute, I've got, I've got tons of hits. I've got tons of songs. I've got lots of stuff. I've, you, you're showing them your business. You're critically acclaimed. If yeah. you somebody Google's you, they can see yeah. that you've got all these videos. Uh, you get, all this. Yeah, 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 you're on every platform. Up, got company or something like that. Yes, you're on every platform. You're 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 established. You're yeah, an established yeah, exactly. artist. Yeah. So that's kind of like one other thing. And then there's also significant recognition now this one is kind of easier to get because but this one this one um the minister ministry of culture helps a lot with because you mean in Jamaica, yes Babsy, Babsy Grange. Grange yeah there her office will help an artist with this um and they she they've done like interview not interviews but seminars and stuff like that to show artists and then if the artist is paying attention they need to listen to what's being said with the government because the government is now helping artists yeah. get to the point where they can start to have more recognition. So this is called significant recognition, and it says that you have to show evidence of that the beneficiary, the artist, it has a um, has achievements recognized by organization, critics, government agencies, and other recognized experts in the industry. So that would mean, so Babsy Grange's office actually has you register as an artist, which all artists should register. They should be registered with all the agencies, with um, Jaria, with any, with any agency that is in, a, in Jamaica, they should register as, as that because those people will write letters to the government on your behalf to show that you are a recognized artist artist in the united in um sorry in your country mm -hmm. so so um so babsy's office will do that and then and then provided that everything you really are you register you have you present yourself there's a lot of stuff that you have to do that they ask you to do and then they will write a letter on your behalf stating that you are recognized in the national registry as this particular artist i think when i, when I was given money like five thousand I think I all of a loaded ways up when I think it's Etana was up for the five thousand. What's the five thousand? Five when I'm up on tour, the government Oh yeah. Well, the, that's a the, different thing. Five, she has some grants. Yes. And she I, has I, some I touring know, grants. Toto J was involved with the, getting the money too, but people see that as 
you know, weird that like the government are gay. Well, I mean, uh, I thought it was support. weird. Let me tell you wh how I met some of the, the Bayesian artists, like Alison Hines is one of my clients, and I have a lot of artists from, I've had Trinidad and other things. The one country, Mia Motley, when she was the Minister of Culture, I met her. We did a tour in... Uh, 98 in we did the spirit of unity tour out of california and it went all around and we ended it in barbados we they joined barbados came with money and put people on the tour and brought artists her whole she they brought everybody from that was there um i can't even remember everyone's i'm not going to go deep but but anyway but barbados takes money and puts it into artists on tours took them to um meet them took spent money I took them yeah, Pele. Pele used to meet them. yeah meet them was uh, um i don't know if meet them still happens now but i don't think so yeah but meet them was where europe you met europe all the artists and the caribbean artists would go and it was a music conference uh, just yeah. to meet all of the bookers and people in europe sort of like south by southwest in mm -hmm. in the united states now mm -hmm. so they would take their artists and do showcases and all of that you know so i mean and so under and they did so they put a lot of money you could get grants they would sit, put you on tour they would and i thought well why isn't jamaica doing that i mean this is like there's not even there weren't even that many artists considered in mm -hmm. barbados compared to the hundreds of artists in jamaica that needed that kind of help but now they are doing that they've been doing she's been doing that because she's got a music background the minister has a music background yes, yes. so she's been doing that for many many years and so she understood how to keep moving this forward so and 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 i think it's good so i would say if you want to get back to you know the visa thing if you need to get if you're looking to get a visa in the future and you want to you're you're doing a lot of work on your own your management or whatever is helping you go and register with the minister of culture gender sports well i can't say the whole title but mm -hmm. go to that office and register yourself and do what you need to do you can just send them an email they will um abigail uh roll she can send her email she'll give you the information you go through the information and then you become somebody that they now understand and you're recognized and they can help yeah, you yeah. right and they're and yeah they have grants they have stuff that they're working and developing for artists so you guys d pay attention to what the uh, government is doing because they are trying to step it up okay you know to help they've been stepping it up the very last other thing after getting significant recognition is remuneration remuneration is showing your high salary showing how you're going how your money structure is set up so if you've been recording you've been getting royalties you've been an artist for many years you have documentation that you should be saving if you have a publishing deal and you're getting royalties save your statements if you have signed a contract with an agency save your statements if you are whatever you're doing to show how your income what your income is as an artist, keep those documents and put them away and save them because you need to show that down the road. Maybe you have to pay taxes in Jamaica. So you need, you should be able to keep your, your money and everything straight. So those are things that you have to deal with. Significant recognition from government agencies, your, ta you know, your money, how you, right, how hold you. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to take the first break. I'll take a break and come forward. Okay. Cutting it. Yes, we're going through the PSAs. I hope they... The, especially the younger artists they have ambition for go tour America. The sister who have here, Tula, is very experienced in what she's saying, if you listen to what she's saying. And, you know, it's very important that we do this because we know a whole heap of man get Lego. When we say Lego now, he feels the same. can just throw a man like first time when you want to go away. You have ten man and five of them now do not they want to run away. It's not the same way you like or it's not it's not how it's going out this time, you know what I see it. Yeah, have, have something to show them why he's part of the entourage. You know what I see it? And really and truly it's not that you can't go around them still, you know. Because you can't see a man is your cook. And you show say him about a restaurant at Jamaica. Well it's really run where my try to run with still. So <laughs> there's many ways for to go around it, but Legitimacy is one that is very important, you know, legitimacy. Well, Tula. 
Um, I would say that some of the artists now are putting less and less people on their visas because they are they realize that the that they need to get business done. Right. So they're not trying, it used to be maybe a reggae band would have nine people to 12 people. Um, and then and then some reggae bands will put 18, they put more people and they have the right to put more people. I mean, there's people that have 25 to 30 people as their entourage on their, on their visas. That is possible to do that, but it all has to be explained. You have to be able to, um, if it's if somebody if they ask you about it, you have to be able to give them a compelling argument that those people are essential to true. the artist, right, right. and so that's very important. You want to be able to so you try you know you don't want to deal with um, if you mess up and do something on a level where you have people on your visa and they're not really they're um, they're doing stuff they're running their own program and doing whatever they want to do and they're not taking it seriously then you're going to have a problem. But mostly uh, mostly people are concerned about that because they want to be able to have their visa. It's a privilege to come in. It's a privilege yeah. to be able to work and make money, build your career. Yeah. And just this one visa for one year or three years, you want to do these every, every three years. You're going to do these on and on and on until you get to the point where either you're going to migrate 100% to the United States or you're going to continue doing these. Some, I could tell you some artists that have been getting these visas for over 30 years. Because they don't want to migrate to the United I States. Like it, I, I, I get your visa there for over for, 30 years. Yes, exactly. And I know I'm work, I believe. Yeah, no, it's, so it's a part of your business structure. Your mm. management structure, your business structure, you just have to make sure you have it together so you can do these things yeah. in a regular way. You have certain freedom. Right, so you can go and you can work and you can build your career in and on in get real business and real you know make real money. Mm -hmm. In the United States, it's you've got to have it. You can't work without it. All right, you have run down the the points. Yeah, so way, there's ever. so there's some um, fees, a lot of fees. It's very expensive. Um, I tell everybody that it's not cheap. It's not, and if you are um, don't have a sponsor, if you don't have money yourself like to pay if you don't have a sponsor or a um, u.s employer that's going to pay the fees to get you there because they have a tour or they have some major contract or work and they're this is part of the you know part of the getting you there has to be paid it's very expensive to do this so you have to pay attention the fees so in you're going to do a if you do a o1 or a p or whatever you're going to do one petition one petition right now it used to be as of two months ago to file it as a regular filing which means can take them four months to approve it oh yeah yeah so for now? up to, yeah it takes it you're not you have to pay for a rush if you want you it to the be artist done visa, the old one an artist take visa five more, four months if you this is right so there's regular processing and there's premium processing yeah. regular processing Two months ago was four hundred and sixty dollars. As of April first, the four hundred and sixty dollars went to one thousand one one thousand fifty five dollars. So it went from four sixty to one thousand fifty five dollars. US. US. Now you need two petitions because you're gonna bring in yourself and you're gonna bring in your band. So right now you have to pay one thousand fifty five dollars twice and then if you want it to be premium processed so which would gives them 15 business days to look at it so if you have to be on tour in two months you got to do premium processing right, back up little, back up little. if the artist a carry a band make up of four people right I have to pay one thousand dollars for each of the person. no no the petition so oh. let's look at the petition is the actual the the document that goes to the government. Yeah, yeah. Ask them, say oh, uh, So there's a one uh, petition, two petition. There's an O one petition and an O two petition. Okay. Yes. The O two is all of your people. Could be twenty people. It could, be, 20 people. Mark, it could yeah. be up to twenty five people on on yeah, one O two yeah. petition. Up to twenty five people. Yes. If you had twenty six people, you have to do two. Okay. The next, the twenty six so person 25 has to be. Twenty five is the limit. Twenty five is the limit on the O two petition. Yes. And on the O one one would be the one person. All right, suppose the lead one, artist. Suppose it's a group. Then it would be the group. The O-1. 
No, then a group would be on a P. The okay, group would be okay. on the P. And that's a different... That's a uh, different... So look at this, right? The O one is a singular artist, right? Yeah, like a... Like, let's yeah. say like... Let's say like... Um, let's say like... Uh, uh, Sean Kuti from yeah. Africa. Yeah. One, Sean, one... Sean would be on an O one. Yeah. And then him and his 25 to 50 dancers and singers yeah. and, and, and percussionists and everything and would be on the O2. All right, so the, the, the other one now with a group, like you have the, 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 the Abyssinians are... The group. Uh, they, would be group. On a, they would be on a P. A P. That P1. P1. If, you're three, if you had three guys, they would be on a P because they're a group. Yes. Yeah, but the band group. is not recognized as a group. The, the group, the band would be on a PS for support. Okay, okay. Unless okay. they want to make one of those guys the lead singer. All right. So when you pay the petition, what else you have to pay again? No? So you have to pay for the petition. Yeah. Uh, to be, um, you have to pay for union letters. You have to. You can't just come to the United States and say I'm going to work. You have to go to the union, and the union has to say. Yes, okay, I'm going to look at your petition and I'm going to give you a letter and approve you on this letter saying that there's nobody else in the United States that can do what you do. Yeah. So, very, you're doing reggae. Yeah, now they have white reggae. Um, they reggae have American book, reggae, reggae bands. From, so. Yeah, but, it's, but they can't say, you can't, everybody has to come in from Jamaica. They can't say, oh, well, we already have our reggae bands now. We don't need you, Jamaica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can't do that. Yeah. But, they, but you have to also prove Union, all the people on your thing, there's different unions. There's a union for the, the musical artists. There's a union for the business people. There's a union for the technical people. There's a union for, so there's a union for everything. So you have to get all the union letters for the people that you're bringing in. So who's soliciting these unions? The management? The person who's doing the visa. Oh, you? Yeah. Okay. The person who does the visa does takes. They have to do all of this work. Oh, union thing. Yeah, you get to you get the unions, and then so the unions say, okay, fine, you guys can come to the United States. So then the people in the United States at the United at the USCIS will go and they will say, okay, fine, you got you've met this standard. You've met this as the it's the United States citizen immigration. We have to take another break. Okay, I know this is a lot of stuff. When the break done, we can have like a length of time. So we'll take the break. Well, my people, this is where we'll be ending it off. Um, some of the recording did stop prematurely due to the phone that I was recording it on has ended up going out for some reason. I don't know. But um, I'm going to definitely search around on the internet and see if I can get the rest of this interview because I think it's super important for us as Jamaican or if you're an artist, it's super important for you to watch this fully if you're trying to, you know, go overseas and do some work and stuff like that. So I, if I if I manage to find the rest of this interview, I'm going to do a part two and have it out for you so that you can watch the full thing and get the full understanding of how the visa thing work for artists you know it's a black power movement definitely drop a like and subscribe and share to a friend or family so they can be a part of the movement now my people stay tuned for the stepping razor in a few hours from now and have yourself a great one bless